Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we're moving the cows into a new field. And the field that they're in, I'm going to have troubles getting them out of there. I can just see it already this morning. But we'll see what we can do. The gate is it on, on the wrong corner to bring them out of that field. So it's going to be a challenge, I'll bet. get the water tank set up here first and their minerals set up and then we'll go see if we can get them out of there and then after that we're gonna go and we're gonna pull some snow back and take a look at the stockpile and I want to discuss a little bit about ground the soil freezing up uh, it's something that comes up quite a bit and for the most part it's zero here this morning we've had negative seven temperatures we haven't been above freezing for I don't know, 10 or 15 days here now. And the soil here for the most part is still not froze down. So we're gonna discuss that a little bit too. But let's get this stock tank hooked up first and then we'll go from there. Just heating the thinning up a little bit because it froze on me. Okay, I gotta cut this one to size. I don't have a piece that's even remotely close to, to fit in that. There we go. Hey guys, don't forget to, to subscribe, like, comment, share it with a friend, and most importantly, Share the videos so people know that our channel's out there. Okay, I've been, I, I was just asked this question here a couple days ago. What we do about the hydrants and the cows turning the hard hydrants on. I just take three or four step-in posts. Three or four step in post, and I have these little short pieces of uh, poly wire with a loop on the end. This little loop to go around the like that then I take a jumper and make make it hot I'll keep them from messing with the hydrant put our minerals in with the cows that was another topic that come up should we have a a mineral feeder with a lid on it and 
have it spiked down to a pallet where we got to drag it around the pasture field. You can see how easy and portable this is. I just have, I drilled two holes in it and cut the slot out so you got a nice handle. And there's our minerals. I don't feel we need a, a mineral feeder with a lid on it. It actually, the calves cannot get in to drink out of it. So, or yeah, drink out of it. The calves can't get in to get the minerals out of it. So I like an open top mineral feeder. And another thing about this feeder is, yeah, it's gonna get some rain and I don't have any drain holes in it or anything. Uh, I'll dump, dump a little bit of the liquid off and then I'll just pick it up with the liquid in it, set it in the buggy as level as possible, and then, then we're off to the next paddock. So that's, that's our mineral feeder. And then, of course, we just fenced that hydrant out. And then our tank's full over here. And I'm not sure we're going to need to go to our insulated tank this year. We've been having pretty good success with this one here, the uninsulated tank, which I'm good with because it's a lot more portable. You can notice here, I just drug some snow up around it. And snow is one of the best insulators that we have. So that will keep that tank from freezing down. And then you can see here the water percolating from my wee wee valve that I have in there that shoots up and then keeps this here thawed out so the water can drain off and we don't have a big sump hole right here in front of the cows or in front of the water or in the past I've had big ice slicks in front of the water and the cows just slip and slide around on it so okay let's go uh, we're gonna do a time lapse too here today hopefully it works out there's a big bird. I don't know what kind of bird it is. Looks like a big old crow. Man, it's a big crow if it's a crow. Maybe it's a raven. I don't know. I've never seen a raven around here, so. I guess it's possible. Well, let's go see if we can get these girls out of this up here. It's going to be a tough one. Girls. Somehow those came unhooked or I didn't hook them whenever I was setting the fence up. So we'll see what happens here you can see should be a gate right here at this corner instead I put it in up there thinking it would be better but kind of double thinking what I was doing my girls my girls <whistles> see the gates up here at this corner so I'm gonna fake them out and make them think they're going out this gate hopefully I don't know, we'll see. Come on, girls! We're gonna get some of them. I don't think we're gonna get them all. Come on, girls! For about five or six years, we didn't have a gate at this end of this field. It's because we really didn't graze it at all. By golly, we might get them all. That would be totally amazing to me if we do. We got one right here that's not going like he should. Push them up. Knuckleheads, of course, here. Too white. He's been, he's been giving me problems. Too white has. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, knucklehead. Go on. 
Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on, knucklehead. See, he's wanting to go back on me. Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, no. Come on, you know where you're going. You come back for too light. Good boy. I don't know why they do this. Always got to be one or two of them. Bunch, it's a pain. Come on. Come on. This little bull here sold. Come on. Come on. Come on. He knew the whole time. He was just being lazy. Okay. Got the whole cow herd. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now if we can get them moved. Because I had to set an alleyway. To get them into the paddock. They're going in. Because of water. Uh, see, they wanted to go back in there. Did a nice job in here grazing last night. This is the last paddock. <clears throat> and I've been trying to do at least one video in every field that we move into, guys. Just so you can see what's going on. How we're doing it, how we're getting it done. So you can possibly replicate it a little bit on your farm. Now... I gotta bring them out of this corner and they gotta go go up there and go down. That's gonna be their paddock up there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna choke them down here. Only let a few through at a time. Come on girls, get up there. We don't want whole bunch of them and then pop them out of the fence it's going pretty good here so I'm happy with that there's a cow there she's eating deer tongue this field has some deer tongue in it it's the most prevalent warm season grass that we have in Pennsylvania if you look it up on the uh, internet it's going to tell you it's probably one of the worst forages there is but we have forage analysis of 19% crude protein come on get up there so don't believe everything you see on the internet and actually I have a gentleman that raises grass seed he told me it wasn't any good either it was a really low quality forage is with a lot of things here on the farm. Come on. Come on. Come on. I know that piece of grass right there looks inviting. Good girl, Toby. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Go on. Come on. Come on, guys. The bull, he's being an idiot. It's like I said, with all bulls, are a pain in the ass. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go. Go. Pretty proud of those calves. They're actually um, 
they know what they're doing. Okay, I'm gonna leave. Actually, I'll tear that out whenever I come out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, guys, that wasn't too bad. Pretty low stress. Said some of them cut back on there. Cut back on me sometimes there at that gate. Okay. Now, let's get this fence gathered up. Like I said, it's zero here this morning. Although, we don't have the wind, so... Man, the wind's what causes all the problems, I think. What'd you have, Scott? Toby's looking for a mouse. We have here oh horse nettles. Horse nettle berries. There's some of what's in underneath this snow. And before we had snow, we had a half inch of ice on there. And after we get snow cover, it actually, that ice actually melts off of there. Because this grass here was all froze down to the soil. The stuff that was touching the ground. It was all froze down to the soil. And see that's... That's all freeze dried now. And it's available good forage for the cows. We have a field that we tested. It was similar to this one. It tested at almost 15% crude protein. So that's more than adequate for the cows to eat. I wanted to see how deep the snow is. One thing I wanted to explain a little more in detail here. If we would have given the cows this whole section here, they would have only been here for a day or two before they had all the grass tramped down to where they couldn't get it anymore. Because whenever they tramp this snow down into the ice, the grass becomes unavailable. The cows can't get it out. So we set an alleyway. We brought them back into the section that has the, the hydrant in it with the water tank and the minerals. And then we'll strip graze them away from that point and this section here now should last us three or four days instead of one or two days. So, um, and we'll move them twice a day here. And you can see the quality of the forage that we have. And let's go check these girls out doing a little bit of grazing through the snow. Um, nice and quiet, happy as can be. They're getting it out. They're getting the grass out. There's a calf there, C162's calf for, from this year. Getting a lot of grass. And according to the stick, we have almost 12 inches of snow. We had 14, it melted down to nine. And then we had additional snow yesterday. Uh, there it says we have 11 inches. They're happy to be here. They've been working pretty hard the last couple days in the last couple fields that we've had them in. Here's old Lazy Bones actually getting something to eat. What's in there, Blueberry? Huh? 
what's in there? January 22nd here. You can still hear the cows ripping grass. See who else is. Everybody's doing well. They all got grass in front of them. Yeah, they're doing good. Some good stuff here, I'll tell you. Primarily orchard grass and red clover in this field with some uh, trefoil, bird's foot trefoil in here as well. There you go. Look at it, guys. Stuff some good stuff. Eighteen inches there. It's about 30 inches tall, the grass that's in here. Or I guess, to rephrase that, it's 30 inches long, about 6 inches tall maybe. I want to talk about the soils freezing down and whatnot. Boy, that one there's got a mouthful. It'll do well in here. I like this field. We've winter grazed this field now for this is the fourth consecutive year. Okay. Ten inches of snow right there. Let's pull, pull the snow back and see what we got with the shovel. It's been really cold here. It's zero here today. We've had negative seven. We've been in the negatives a couple days. Hasn't been above freezing, hasn't been out of the 20s actually in a while. Man, if you could just smell that soil. Just frozen down a little bit tight to get it out with the shovel. But you can still easily stick a post with the. See how I got that bent? I talked about that in one of the earlier videos. Easy peasy, guys. Okay, I'm going to set the time lapse up.
Okay guys, hopefully you found that video interesting. We'll be here for a few days. We'll hopefully get a couple other videos for you, but don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell, and most importantly, share the videos. Share the videos. That's where all we're going to get the word out on this channel. So we'll talk to you later. Thank you everybody for watching the video. Talk to you later. Bye.